Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Miller, and the SCP we're going to be looking at today is SCP-4666, Object Class, Keter. Special Containment Procedures Web traffic and law enforcement channels worldwide are to be monitored for evidence of SCP-4666 activity and particularly for cases of stalking or reports of anomalous phenomena involving families with young children. Should a Weisnacht event be suspected to be in progress, the nearest containment task force is to be dispatched to attempt containment of SCP-4666. Standard PDP-8 humanoid first contact protocols apply. Media coverage of family deaths attributed to SCP-4666 is to be suppressed or falsified to make said deaths appear as non-anomalous home invasion murders. Forensic evidence and SCP-4666-A instances collected by non-Foundation agencies are to be confiscated and witnesses amnesticized. Description SCP-4666 is currently believed to be a single, exceptionally long-lived humanoid entity of unknown origin. Survivors of Weisnacht events typically describe SCP-4666 as a very tall, between 2 and 2.3 meters, elderly male of European descent with an extremely emaciated appearance. The entity always appears completely naked, even when observed outdoors in the freezing weather. Though the nature and extent of its anomalous properties remain uncertain, SCP-4666 appears capable of instantaneous or near-instantaneous travel to any location north of 40 degrees north latitude and possibly to any location on Earth. SCP-4666 activity occurs exclusively within a period of 12 consecutive nights every year, from the night of December 21st or 22nd to the night of January 1st or 2nd. This period is known as SCP-4666's active phase. During this phase, in what are termed Weisnacht events, SCP-4666 will appear at dwellings in one or multiple locations north of 40 degrees north latitude. In all known Weisnacht events, these dwellings have shared the following characteristics. Isolated rural location, home to a family with at least one child under the age of eight, and situated in an area with snow cover lasting throughout the duration of the event. Weisnacht events consist of the following general progression. Nights 1-7 to seven. Children will report seeing SCP-4666 in the vicinity of their family's dwelling. The entity will typically be observed watching the dwelling from a distance, such as from across a nearby field or from the edge of a neighboring forest. In some cases, children will report waking up at night to find SCP-4666 watching them sleep through a window. Nights 8 to 11. Family members, including the parents, will report sounds of footsteps coming from the roof or the attic. An extremely unpleasant odor will also frequently be noticed inside the dwelling. No cause for these phenomena will be found. As a result, parents will often begin to suspect their family is being stalked, or even that their dwelling might be haunted. Night 12. Over the course of the night, one of two scenarios will occur. The first, and most common, is that SCP-4666 will kill all members of the family save for one child under the age of eight whom it will abduct. SCP-4666 will inflict incapacitating injuries to family members while they are sleeping, then herd them into a single room of the dwelling where it will proceed to kill them in view of each other. The method of killing varies with the event and will typically be preceded by some form of torture, which appears to serve as a ritualistic purpose. See Weisnacht events log below. In the second scenario, which has occurred in roughly 15% of known Weisnacht events, SCP-4666 will not harm the family. Family members will report hearing footsteps inside their dwelling at night, though no signs of forced entry will be found. In the morning, children will discover presents at the foot of their beds. These will consist of toys crudely crafted from the remains of human children. See SCP-4666-A instances log below. The criteria, if any, by which SCP-4666 determines the outcome of a Weisnacht event are unknown. Document 4666-530091 
Weisnacht to Venslog. Location: Unknown Village, Croatia, 1498. Description of Weisnacht event: Unconfirmed. An entire family was killed with the exception of one of the children, age unknown, who was abducted. Though specific details about the event are not available in recovered documents, it was noted that the killings presented strong paganistic elements and that the family members had been made to suffer greatly prior to death. The archbishop who oversaw the investigation wrote that he believed the family had been killed as part of a demonic ritual. Location: Unknown Village, Rupert's Land, Present Day, Ontario, Canada, 1689. Description of Weisnacht event. Unconfirmed. An entire family was killed with the exception of two of the children, one of whom was abducted, and one of whom, female age unknown, escaped during the killings and was able to reach a nearby village. She told authorities that a naked man had broken into her family's dwelling during the night and proceeded to torture them. Exact method not specified in recovered documents. Upon investigation, the bodies of the family members were found inside their dwelling, hanging upside down from the ceiling. All had been exsanguinated. Location: Eichstadt, Germany, 1913 Description of Weisnacht event An entire family was killed with the exception of the youngest child, male, age 3, who was abducted. The bodies of the parents and five other children were found inside a stable adjoining their dwelling. They had been restrained by having knives, pitchforks, and other sharp implements forced through the palms of their hands and into the walls of the stable before having their tongues removed, leading to hemorrhaging and death. Blood from the family members had then been used to paint elaborate patterns of unknown meaning on the hides of the mule, goat, and two cows present in the stable. The animals themselves were not harmed. Neighbors told the authorities that in the week preceding the killings, the father of the family had mentioned finding tracks in the snow around the family's dwelling, which appeared to have been made by bare human feet. Location: Plyos, Soviet Union, 1956 Description of Weisnacht event An entire family was killed, with the exception of the youngest child, male age 4, who was abducted. The bodies of the parents and one other child were found in the living room of their house. They had been restrained, and their feet had been held over flames in the fireplace for an extended period of time, calcining the tissues of the feet and exposing the bones. They had then their heads crushed with an unknown heavy implement. Hundreds of bite marks believed to have been inflicted post-mortem were found on each of the bodies. Branches cut from a fir tree outside the house had also been placed over the bodies to unknown purpose. Location: Skudenenshaven, Norway, 1971 Description of Weisnacht event An entire family was killed with the exception of the second youngest child, female, age 5, who was abducted. The bodies of the parents and two other children were found in the basement of their house. Each had at least one limb pulled off by brute force before being stabbed precisely 39 times with an unknown sharp implement possibly a piece of bone from one of the removed limbs, resulting in massive blood loss and death. The family members had been eviscerated, and their small and large intestines removed and cut into 30 to 50 centimeter long pieces. These had been arranged in radiating lines around the bodies. Feces from the intestines had been used to trace symbols of unknown meaning on the walls of the basement. Location: Egelstadter, Iceland 1996 Description of Weisnacht event An entire family was killed with the exception of the youngest child, female age 4, who was abducted. The bodies of the parents and seven other children were found inside their house. All had large pieces of skin removed from their backs, necks, and groins prior to death. Removed skin was found to have been partially consumed. They had been killed by decapitation with a bucksaw that had belonged to the family. Following death, the family members' headless bodies had been carried into their respective rooms and placed on their beds. Each of the removed heads had also been placed upright on a step of the staircase leading from the first to the second floor, with the parents' heads on the top two steps and the children's heads on the lower steps, in decreasing order of age. Document 4666-530985 SCP-4666-A Instances Log 
Location, Nurms, Finland, 1811. Description of SCP-4666-A Instance A small wooden drum with two wooden drumsticks of uneven length. Drum skin consists of a 390 centimeter cubed piece of skin belonging to a human child stretched with a thread made from human tendons. Location, Gallagher, Wales, 1857. Description of SCP-4666-A Instance A small knife, 15 centimeters in length, the blade was 6 centimeters in length, sculpted from a single piece of bone belonging to a human child. Symbols of unknown meaning had been carved into the handle. Location, Makat, Kazakhstan, 1903. Description of SCP-4666-A instance. A flute made from the hollowed out femur of a human child. Holes have been bored at uneven intervals along its length. The femur appears to have been dyed in human blood. Location, Bangor, Michigan, 1960. Description of SCP-4666-A instance. A wooden box containing 13 miniature human-like figurines, each 4 to 6 centimeters in height, made from the phalangeal bones of human children, tied together with strips of human tendon. The figurines had been decorated with human hair and small pieces of torn clothing. DNA testing revealed that the remains belonged to 18 separate children. Location, Cape Broil, Canada, 1976. Description of SCP-4666-A instance. A ball, 23 centimeters in diameter, made from 19 layers of human skin, wrapped tightly around the desiccated head of an unidentified human child. Male, age two or three. Layers of skin are held in place with pine resin. Location, Bard, Netherlands, 2006. Description of SCP-4666-A instance. A hairbrush. The handle is made out of wood and poorly carved. In place of bristles, 43 deciduous human teeth have been set at irregular intervals into the handle. DNA testing revealed that each tooth belongs to a different child. Only two of the teeth could be matched to known abduction victims of SCP-4666. Teeth vary in age from a few days to over 400 years. Discovery SCP-4666's existence and ongoing activity were first detected in 1974 through the Foundation's newly implemented Anomalous Signature Recognition Program, when several highly similar home invasion incidents resulting in family deaths were found to have occurred throughout the Northern Hemisphere during the night of January 1st or 2nd. Extensive research into law enforcement archives worldwide eventually uncovered evidence of probable Weisnacht events for nearly every preceding year, going back to the late 18th century, average of 3.1 known events per year. Numerous historical documents were also found which appear to describe SCP-4666 activity occurring prior to this period, in some cases as early as the 2nd century AD in Europe and Russia, and as early as the 1st century BC in Scandinavia. Fingerprints belonging to the same humanoid entity have been discovered at the locations of all Foundation investigated Weisnacht events. These have been matched to a partial fingerprint found preserved in dried blood on a recovered SCP-4666-A instance dating from 1873. The fingerprints present characteristics not known to occur in human beings. See image. Human-like white hairs were also recovered from the locations of several Weisnacht events, though no DNA, human or otherwise, could be extracted from them. Addendum 4666-01 On January 2nd, 2018, several SCP-4666-A instances were discovered at a family's residence in Huna, Alaska, following the conclusion of Weisnacht event number 060-198. Among these instances was SCP-4666-A-0960, which consisted of a crude life-size doll made from the emaciated body of a female child to which the following modifications had been made. A dress made from various pieces of dirty discolored clothing had been sewn around the body and in several places into the body's skin. The mouth had been sewn shut with thread made from human tendons 
and the lips painted red with a solution consisting primarily of human blood. The fingernails of another child had been glued over the body's fingernails with pine resin. These had been painted red with the same human blood-based solution. Three of the body's fingers were missing. The entire scalp had been removed from the head, and the scalp of another child with long blonde hair sewn onto the head in its place. The hair had been tied into two braids. Both eyes had been removed, and two large round pebbles on which eyes had been crudely painted placed into the empty orbits. Upon examination by the family, the child from whom the doll had been made was found to be still alive, albeit unconscious. Authorities were notified, and the child was airlifted to Bartlett Regional Hospital in Juneau, Alaska, where she survived for 18 hours. Two Foundation agents were dispatched and were able to interview the subject, see interview log below. Following the subject's death, her body was confiscated by the agents and all witnesses amnesticized as per standard procedure. DNA testing revealed that the subject had been Ekaterina Morozova, age 7, a known abduction victim of SCP-4666 taken from her family's residence in Dubovka, Russia on January 2, 2016. Autopsy of the subject's body showed she had been severely malnourished during the two years following her abduction, which had resulted in considerable stunting. Weight was only 15 kilograms, height was only 90 centimeters. A number of scars and burns were present on her skin, and she had suffered two bone fractures, left tibia and left ulna, that had not been reset and had healed improperly. Hands were heavily calloused. Cause of death was attributed to multiple organ failure resulting from severe, sustained malnourishment. Document 4666535814 Interview Log Audio Log 4666-06201 Date, January 2nd, 2018 Time, 1127 to 1149 PM Alaskan Standard Time Location, Bartlett Regional Hospital, Juneau Alaska. Interviewers, Agent Anthony Kowalczyk, Agent Susan Muse attending. Subject, Ekaterina Morozova, SCP-4666-A-0960. Female, age 7. Notes. The subject regained consciousness for a period of roughly 30 minutes prior to expiring, during which she was interviewed. Hospital staff had previously removed the thread that had been sewn into her lips, allowing her to speak. Despite having been administered a morphine drip, the subject was largely coherent throughout the interview. The subject did not understand English, and initially only spoke a language that was unfamiliar to agents Kowalczyk and Muse. However, after several minutes, the subject began addressing the agents in Russian, which she spoke poorly. Agent Kowalczyk, who spoke rudimentary Russian, was able to conduct the interview without the need for an interpreter. This interview has been translated by my on-site AI, Acid. Playing log, now. Hello. I am Anthony. What's your name? Deep. Everything, earth and mud, and ice. 
lots of children there with you. Wow. Let's just get rid of this guy's face off of the monitor and let's all go and have a really good holiday and just take our minds off this thing, okay? <laughs> Thank you for listening, if indeed you still are, and you're all dismissed. Goodbye. I would like to give a special thank you to James Saba, Maximus Decimus, Arbiter Soul, Dr. Bright, Darius Tan, Justin Day, Ophelia Gray, Der Nom, NJ Vujak, Corey Barker, Arunian, and Dr. Proctor. Thank you all so much for your support. It's greatly appreciated. If you would like a special thank you at the end of each of my videos, and some other cool stuff as well, visit patreon.com forward slash thevolgan. Thank you.